Hi, this is Janice with Needles and Fashions, and I'm going to give you a really quick tutorial on how to make the square top that's featured on my blog, www.needlesandfashion.blogspot.com. So the first thing um, is your supplies. You're going to need um, some craft paper or some 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper um, taped together. You'll probably need about nine pieces of paper to do this pattern, uh, which would be equivalent to about the size of this piece of craft paper. You're going to need your your cutting source, whether it's a rotary dial cutter or scissors. You're going to need pencil or pen, whichever is more comfortable for you. Um, you're going to need about, for me, I'm going to need two-thirds of a yard, but just to be safe for anyone of any size that's making this, you're going to need about a yard of fabric. You're going to need fabric that stretches or shirting material that's thick enough not to be um, faced on the inside. And you're going to need two strips of elastic. Um, I chose this size six inches. Um, the, the object of this shirt is to create sort of a tank top that has um, a seam only in the six inches on the side for me or ever, whatever length is appropriate for you. I chose um, to, for this template a tank top that I already created because I, the object of it is to find something that lays a little bit relaxed in the armpit area that's not tight up on the armpit. So I chose a tank top that already fits me in that form of fashion. It does not have to be the same size as the shirt that you're making because we're going to take measurements for that. But the reason why you want that is because you are going to be using the armhole as a guideline for this shirt. So what I did was I laid out my shirt here um, so that I can make my pattern. The reason why I'm doing this on craft paper is because once you make this and you feel about it the way that I do, you're going to want to make it over and over again. So I want to have at least a pattern for it for when I make it in the future. So the first thing I'm going to do is trace out the armhole and the side and along the top. That's the only areas that I'm going to be tracing. So I'm going to freehand it from here. I'm just going to draw down this armhole. And I'm going to come down on the side. I'm only going to come down about two inches because, again, we're going to take some measurements from there. And I'm going to come across the top. I'm going to use my ruler to draw across the top. And I'm going to draw a straight line for now, but we're going to make a pivot to it about a half an inch. And just mark that ending point, which is going to be the midpoint of this particular shirt, not necessarily for our pattern. So I have that marked here. So I no longer need this shirt anymore. Now the key to this um, pattern is you're going to make sort of a boat neck type um, neckline. So what I want to do is take my curve ruler or you can freehand this as well. I'm just going to make a little bit of a curve and this is going to be uh, graduated to about a half an inch. So I'm starting right at the at the corner and I'm just going to draw this over and this is going to dictate my neckline. So I have that there and I can just mark this through just to know that I'm not using this line anymore. And so now it's off to the measurements. Now, I wanted this shirt to be 23 inches long. And I measured that from measuring from my collarbone down to the length that I want this shirt to be. I wanted to go over the zipper of the shorts or pants that I'll be wearing with it. So for me, that's 23 inches. So from that curved line, I'm going to measure down 23 inches. You're going to need your tape measure as well. Sorry, it's another um, supply. So from this point here, I'm going to measure down 23 inches. And I'm going to add one inch to allow for the seams at the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to mark that here. Now, for this particular pattern, I'm using white fabric and white elastic because you want elastic that's going to match your fabric. I am going to be surging the ends of this fabric. So therefore, I'm not going to add any seam allowance to this particular pattern. If you choose to seam this, um, just know that in this particular uh, pattern, it's going to show. 
Um, you can double seam it. If you're going to double seam it, you want to add a half an inch to these uh, lines that you, or to the pattern that you draw. Or if you're going to seam it, you don't have to add it at all. So I have my 23 inches marked here. And then next thing I'm going to do is mark the width of my shirt. I measured around the widest part of my bust line and I came up with 21 inches. So I'm going to measure from here. Measure out 21 inches and make a mark here. And this is going to be a square shirt, so there's no indentions for the waist or anything like that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my, straighten out my lines, and I'm going to make it straight down. I'm going to cross that over with my 23 inch mark, 24 inch mark. I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to connect that with the other half of my shirt pattern here. And kind of square that off. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this out. It's going to be a really simple shirt to make. And you're only going to be drafting one side because we're going to fold this over and, and cut the other side so we can make sure that we have a symmetry uh, piece of fabric, I mean a pattern to cut with. And I'm just going to cut that, you know, I'll just kind of so I won't have any excess paper and I'm going to cut off the bottom and the side. Craft paper, craft paper tends to fold a lot. Sometimes taken together eight and a half by 11s are a lot easier. So I'm going to fold this over and line up the edges. Gonna fold that over there. Then I'm going to cut out the other side to make sure that it's even. And finish off that neckline. Very easy, very fast. So here I literally have the pattern for my shirt. And that's pretty much it. This is going to be a loose fitting shirt. You don't have to worry about any fitting on the sides, adding any inches, anything like that. So I have that set. And you can see how it looks here. Very simple, very fast, very easy. The next thing you're going to do is take your pattern. And you're going to take out your fabric. And you don't need much fabric for this. I have this fabric on the fold. So it's going to cut both my front and my back piece for me. This is a 60 inch wide, I believe, fabric. So it's going to cover that 23 inches. If not, then you want to make sure that you um, have um, two pieces cut out, which is good to have this pattern for. So I'm going to smooth out my fabric here. Place my pattern weights here. And I am going to go ahead and cut my pattern out.
Now this fabric has a four way stretch. So I don't have to be particular about which way I lay this on the fabric. But if you do want um, a, if you use a, a fabric that has only two way, you want to make sure that you're placing your shirt on uh, vertically to the stretch so that it stretches this way uh, vertically and not horizontally. Oh, excuse me, horizontally and not vertically. I usually walk around my table and do this, but for purposes of this video, I'm not. Okay. So, my pattern side for later. And now I have both the top and the bottom piece for this particular um, shirt. So, now the next thing I'm going to do. is I'm going to seam, uh, excuse me, serge all four edges of my garment. I am going to um, do a, um, a hem on the top. I'm gonna to do a single hem on the top. I'm gonna to do a double hem, very small quarter of an inch hem on the bottom for finishing. So you're gonna serge your, your arm holes and your sides. You're gonna serge the top and the bottom if you want to, if you have a fabric that doesn't spray, you don't have to do it, but you definitely need to serge the sides. Um, if you chose to serge, if you're not, then of course you're going to cut an extra, um, you know, five eighths to a half an inch on both sides to account for the hem that you'll be doing. So this is pretty much it. I'm going to take this to the machine and do those, those um, actions and then I'll be sewing back. I got the serging done on all four sides of my um, fabric on both sides, the front and the back. And I went ahead and did a, a quarter of an inch hem at the top of my, um, of my fabric here. The next thing I'm going to do is, is pin here, pin my front and my back together, front sides together or right sides together. And since I have a little bit of a boat neck going on, what I'm going to do is sew a one inch, um, one inch seam on both ends to create my arm, uh, my arm straps, or I guess the tops of my tank top, whatever you call that, right? <laughs> so I'm going to do that. And then the next thing we're going to do is attach our elastic. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to attach this and we're going to kind of see the um, shirt coming together. Uh, and then we'll be literally 80% done um, after I do this. So I'm going to do this and then we'll be back to attach the elastic to this pattern and we'll pretty much be done. Okay, so I'm back and I went ahead and I seam the, excuse me, I sew the um, inch on the edge of the fabric for the top to make my arm holes. Um, I went ahead and switched over to an inch and a half. I thought an inch was a little bit too thin for me. Uh, so this is the time in this particular project that you want to test out your sizing. You want to make sure your head can fit through the hole. The shirt is laying flat and to your liking. Um, if for some reason you need to make an adjustment, if you need to make the arm holes bigger, you go ahead and adjust one side and get it to your liking or at least gauge where you would, how much you would like to cut, fold it over, cut the other side and just serge it again. So this is a time if you need to make any sizing changes then you can do it now. Same way with the top end, if you want to make any adjustments, you want to make the neck hole a little bit deeper or you want to keep it 
pretty straight along the collarbone and almost on the neck, then you can keep it the same as I did it with the half inch gradual curve, or you can deepen it if you like. It's easy to take this back apart and do it again, or even before you even serve, um, um, sew the armholes, you can go ahead and pin it together and just drape it over yourself and see how it fits. Um, I also decided that I'm not going to hem the bottom since I have it surged. I actually like the finish when I tried it on, so I'm going to keep it like that. Um, next thing I'm going to do is to attach the, or at least pin, the um, elastics on. So our elastic is going to pretty much serve as our side seam. After that, it's just going to lay open. Um, this is something anyone can wear. So depending on how long you want your um, elastic, you can either have it, you know, six inches down, four inches. You can have it longer if you like, but I think this is a very nice feature to this shirt. So what I'm going to do is I have my shirt um, right sides out, and I'm just going to start on one side, and I'm going to pin uh, this fabric along the seam, uh, excuse me, the serge line, because I want it to be uh, right there on the edge for a pretty nice finish. I'm using a one inch elastic. I would probably um, suggest a one and a, inch, one, and a, one and a half inch to two inches elastic um, for this. I'm just pretty much using what I have to see how um, nicely this shirt turns out for me. I probably will change over to two inches or one and a half for my next pattern and just get some elastic that thick, which I usually don't work with. So I'm just gonna, you know, put a couple pins in there. I'm gonna pin it right on the edge. And we're not doing any folding, any hem uh, hemming to this at all because I already have my finished edge and I, that finished edge is gonna continue through the end of the shirt. So I started at the armhole and I did the um, front and I'm just going to pin the back and I'm just going to remove these pins as I sew it. I just want to make sure that I have it gauged correctly here. And you're just going to have just kind of like a peekaboo of elastic showing. It's just a, a feature of the shirt. You can do this with different color uh, elastic or you can do this with the same color elastic, whatever kind of makes you happy. So now that I got this side pinned, I'm going to move over to the next side. Now, if you have, you know, um, elastic that frays a lot, this particular elastic that I have, I don't know exactly what makes it different from other brands. I don't know if it's just a higher quality. It doesn't really fray, but you can always surge the edge um, of this elastic. But I would do it after you attach it to your shirt because in that way it's easy to hold on to. It's easier to feed through your surging machine because you're following the same line of surging that you already done on your shirt. Just gonna pin that there. Pin the front on. Very easy to follow. You're following the edge of the elastic. And again, mine's a six inches, but you can make this whatever length that you would like. So now that I have this pin, I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew a um, seam right down both sides of the elastic where I have it pinned and then we're literally going to be done. I'm going to go ahead and um, surge this. I'm going to, you know, bring it back to you and show you how the end looks and that's pretty much it. Hi, I'm back and I went ahead and attached my elastic to the sides. So if you can see it here, I have my elastic sewn on. I have my surge edge going down on both sides. And that's pretty much it. You're gonna try your shirt on and you're gonna pretty much go. You have your pattern to make this as many times as you would like. Um, if you end up doing this um, tutorial, I ask that you at least please um, comment on uh, below the video or you know hit me up on needlesandfashion.blogspot.com or on our Facebook group, Needles and Fashion. And I look forward to doing uh, more tutorials for you guys. Have a good one.